Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new episode of the NASCAR Heat 5 Career Mode. I hope you're all having a great day today. We go racing at New Hampshire in both the Xfinity Series as well as the Cup Series. But first, we have some breaking news here in today's episode regarding the Red Bull team. They have announced today that Casey Kane will return to the Cup Series with the team next season in the 82 car. A uh, quote from Red Bull, we're delighted to work with Casey again in what will be a season to evaluate the direction that we need to go in the future. So Kane has signed a one-year deal with the team he is now 40 years old in real life so uh, definitely up there and he's just really in for a one season deal to kind of give the team an idea of where they need to go in the future so Casey Kane coming to Red Bull instead of going for a young driver they went for a veteran driver so it's going to be exciting to see what Casey can do in that 82 Red Bull car but we'll come through into the race weekend now for the Xfinity series here at the Overton's 200 and New Hampshire Motor Speedway where instead of myself being in our Xfinity car for this race we had our teammate uh, at Hendrick Motorsports Chase Elliott back in the car. It's been myself and Elliott really sp uh, splitting up the races so far, but we're going to have other drivers like Alex Bowman. You're going to see William Byron, maybe even Larson in this 24 car throughout the rest of the season. And then next season, I'm looking to get a just a one driver in this Xfinity car for a full-time deal now. So hopefully we can pull that off, and that way we can really compete for the championship instead of just splitting it up between the Hendrick Motorsports drivers now as we came through. Though, on this back straightaway on this opening lap, Chase didn't have the greatest qualifying effort, and he kind of struggled here in the Overton's 200 throughout this whole race now as he came through turns. So he was three wide there for a brief moment now as he came through out of turns four. Actually, still three wide as he came out of the corner. LeBay got by him now as he came down the front straightaway. Michael Annette currently found himself fighting up there for the lead as they went down into turn one. Uh, now Kevin Magnuson, the rookie in the Xfinity Series, was up in the mix as well. Haley Deegan running up there in P2. She's pretty much locked in on points. Still looking for her first career win, though, in the Xfinity Series. And if you guys remember to her rookie season last season in the Truck Series, it took her to the first race of the playoffs in the Truck Series to get that first career win. So we'll see what Deegan can do here in the Xfinity Series as she made it all the way to the Final Four last season as well in the Truck Series, but came up short of a championship but we came through a little bit later in this race. Chase still kind of struggling to work his way through traffic, and it was really just a big struggle for him here today in New Hampshire. Now, as he came through down the front stretch into turns, one up the inside there of the 07, but he would complete the pass on him, but we come through to the final moments of this race as he was now up the inside here of Kevin Magnuson approaching the final lap now as he came through out of turn two. So he would pass Magnuson there in that 22 car, and then we would come through to this final lap here in the Overton's 200 at New Hampshire Motor Speedway into turns three and four for the final time. Chase sent it into the corner. Couldn't quite make anything happen out of it now as he came through out of turns four. It was going to be a subpar finish for Chase here as he comes through to cross the line behind the 39 of Ryan Sieg here for a top 10 of eighth place. So can't complain about P8 here for, uh, from Chase, but Michael Annette would pick up the victory over second place of Justin Allgaier. Haley Deegan in P3, Derek Krause as well up there in P4. Krause has three wins in his rookie season so far in the Xfinity Series for Joe Gibbs Racing, and then his teammate of Christian Eckes also has three wins in that 20 car. Now as we come through into the Cup Series race weekend now as we get ready to go with the razor paint scheme on the car for qualifying. The goal was a 29.234, and usually in New Hampshire we put on a good qualifying effort. We usually are always a contender for the race victory at New Hampshire, and I expected the exact same here today as I ran uh, preset seven in qualifying and for the race I ran preset six but we come through out of turn four here on our qualifying attempt down this front straightaway to cross the line we barely beat the goal with a 28.997 and qualify p6 for the Foxwoods Resort and Casino 301 at New Hampshire Motor Speedway now as we're going to check out the rest of the order just five races left in the regular season now as Denny Hamlin and Kyle Busch will be on the front row Martin Truex Jr. rounds out the top 10. Chase Elliott down there in P20. Not a good qualifying effort for our Hendrick Motorsports teammate, uh, who's got two wins on the season now. Timmy Hill, though, at the very bottom of the field. As we come through into race day now, as we're going to check this out here, Casey Kane's Cup Series career, as we just announced him going to Red Bull next season. 18 wins, uh, 176 top 10s, 27 poles. Uh, he was a 2008 All-Star race winner at Charlotte Motor Speedway, as well as a 2004 Rookie of the Year in the Cup Series. Uh, and he's been, of course, gone from the the Cup Series for a few years now in real life, but he will be returning here in the career mode for at least one season. He might be only a one-and-done thing, just trying to get that Red Bull team to where it needs to be now. As you see, Martin Truex Jr. starting at the back after failing inspection as we get ready to take the green flag here alongside the 42 of Ross Chastain. Now from the sixth position, Hamlin and Kyle Busch lead the way to the green flag now as we are underway for the Foxwoods Resort and Casino 301 here at New Hampshire Motor Speedway. Ryan Blaney, Kevin Harvick, P2, or P3, sorry, and P4 on row number 
two now as we go down into turn one. Ryan Blaney, a driver you really want to keep your eye on because he is in a situation right now where he's going to need a lot of good finishes if he wants to make it into the playoffs. There's a bunch of drivers on the bubble right now. The point situation from 14th through 18th is really close. Uh, so it, it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. I said it last episode. The focus is really no longer on us at this point. It's really just on watching that playoff bubble battle right now between about five or six drivers or so. Now as we come through down this front straight away, completing the first lap, we were three wide with Kevin Harvick as well as Austin Dillon. Austin Dillon finds himself in a must-win situation to get in as well as a 42 of Ross Chastain. But Blaney, he can of course point his way in now as we came through out of turn two side by side with the RCR driver of Austin Dillon. Now as I was expecting to make the second lane work, usually I always run the second lane uh, here in New Hampshire as I go to lane, lane number four here in turn three on this lap though uh, but we get a very good exit out of turns four but I have to get out of the throttle there to make sure I don't get too tight and get into the outside wall now as Ryan Blaney tries to hold us off for that third position as Kyle Busch and Denny Hamlin trying to run away very early on here in stage one but fortunately through the center of turns one and two we will now clear the 12 of Ryan Blaney and would waste no time running down the 18 of Kyle Busch as well as Denny Hamlin we come through to lap five entering turns one now looking to that right hand side of the 18 car of Kyle Busch as he came through out of the corner getting uh, right on that right recorder panel trying to pinch him down as best as I can now as we would sure enough though on lap 6 through turns 1 and 2 clear the 18 and Kyle Busch and now fight to the back of our other former teammate of Denny Hamlin here going down this back straight away. Been a bit of a quiet season for Hamlin. He's got a few wins now, uh, but we go down into turns one on at lap seven, lunging up that right-hand side of him, trying to take the lead through turns one and out of turn two. We're probably going to get a better exit than Denny as we go down this back straight away side by side for the lead. Now, as we do briefly hold on to that first position as we dive down into turn three but I go a little bit too deep into the corner opening the door back for that 11 to get back in front of me but we get a nice run through the center of the corner and out of turn four we're going to be even again down the front straight away but the caution actually comes out for the first time here today with 68 laps to go now so and nobody coming into the pit lane here very easy call to make we would stay out fortunately uh we're pretty good on the outside here for restarts in New Hampshire so I was actually okay with being here in P2 but it would have certainly been nice to be P1 you notice there on the order, Chase Elliott has already uh, worked his way into the top 10, so a good pace set so far by our teammate of Chase Elliott as we are underway here for the restart side by side with Denny Hamlin as we go down into turn one, but Kyle Busch is actually going to force a three wide into the corner, so three wide for the lead here between Kyle Busch, Denny Hamlin, and myself. I kind of pinched the 11 there on the exit of the corner, he backs out of it, now we're even in side by side with the 18 of Busch going down this back straight away into turn three, and I think Hamlin probably one of the fastest cars here in stage one, so with Kyle was being in front of him. This is just a golden opportunity for us to get clear of that 18 and potentially drive away, but Kyle does not give up without a fight. Less than 10 laps to go here in stage one as we dive down into turns one, still side by side for the lead. We did get credited with leading that lap. Now, as we came through the center of the corner, we got a very good exit coming through here out of turns two, but Kyle remains of that left-hand side here as we go down towards turns three. Uh, but this time, I decided to lunge into the corner really hard. I get really hard on the brakes. Somebody might have even heard the tires squeal there. I got on the brakes so hard because I drove in so deep trying to clear them. And after that, though, we drove away. We cruised to the stage victory here as we came through into the final lap or onto the final lap here in stage one. And now, Matt DiBenedetto had actually moved up into second place. He had passed both Denny Hamlin as well as Kyle Busch and was trying to run us down, but of course he had nowhere near enough time here to go down this back straight away into turn three. Kyle Busch had actually fallen outside of the top five even as Cole Custer had gotten up into the mix. Custer, a driver that's on the bubble as well, trying to point their way in, uh, so he is in need of a very good run and he's having that here today as we come through to win the first stage here in the Foxwoods Resort and Casino 301 at New Hampshire. There's you see Chase Elliott managed to climb up to P5. Custer in P4 to better that they their runner up to us in that second position. I like it guys. I don't really know how the car is going to drive on the long run because we didn't get to really experience it there but I don't think we need to mess with anything right now. There you heard myself on the radio now. As you see, uh, Anthony Alfredo actually had a very solid first stage, worked himself up inside the top 15. Uh, now as you see at the very bottom, William Byron was the reason for that first caution. He is out of the race, but fortunately for him, he's already won a race and is inside the playoffs. And if he didn't have that win, he would actually uh, not be in the playoffs right now. So uh, a few questionable playoff positions taken up so far here this season. So it's going to get interesting to see what happens in these final five regular season races now as we're underway for the start of stage two as we go into the AMP segment.
there you saw the restart for us at the start of stage two and you can already see we have opened up a good gap between myself and second place which currently belongs to the 11 of Denny Hamlin as we exit turn two going down this back straight away on the third lap uh, stage two a little bit longer of course than stage one 25 laps now here in the second stage so a lot of time and we're really going to get a feel for how this car drives when the tires wear now as Chase Elliott though by the time we came to lap eight he had moved up into second place myself and Elliott just had a battle for a win recently together at Indianapolis which resulted in a photo finish with Elliott being able to get the best of us as I tried door slamming him for the victory came up a little bit short there but uh, now he has two wins on the season. Looking for three is that nine team has really been picking up the pace lately here in the career mode. Uh, about 10 races ago, they were outside of the playoffs. Now they're about uh, sixth or seventh place in the standings overall. So they have really uh, been picking up the performance here as we came through. Now closing in on the halfway point of the second stage. We'll come through to lap 13 of 25. Uh, just cruising at this point. Now the car felt really good. The tires were starting to wear and the car was starting to free up a little bit. Now as we actually have a spin out though, Corey LaJoy goes around out of turns two. And that is going to bring out the caution here in stage two and now he's going to loop it around not quite sure what in the world he's doing uh but now we come up to see the scene and he's just all over the place but the caution is out either way some drivers deciding to come into the pit lane our teammate of alex bowman being one of them who's down there in p31 currently having a terrible race in a race where he really needs to show up and have a good run now as he really cannot afford to have a bad result so a bunch of drivers did come into the pit lane, but I stayed up because I was hoping that we could get another playoff point as, I mean, that's really the only point we have at this point in the season is just trying to get as many playoff points as possible as we're also getting very close to locking up the regular season championship for the second season in a row now as we go down into turns one, Matt DiBenedetto up the inside of that nine of Chase Elliott now as we came through out of turn two going down the spike straight away. I already felt the car kind of a little bit free there as we came through out of turn two, so that was a bit of a concern for myself now as we go down into the corner as DiBenedetto up in that second position trying to put the pressure on the back of us now for that lead as we came through out of turns four and I was definitely feeling that car getting looser as the laps went on there as it really felt loose out of turns four on that lap now and we only have uh, eight laps to go in stage two but I was a little bit concerned about the, how long that was with how the car was driving and sure enough DiBenedetto gets to my left rear quarter panel now on the exit of turn two as I'm playing defense trying to hold him off uh, now as I'm just driving in the line that I'm most comfortable with here which was about a uh, lane or two up from that kind of weird little thing by the yellow line. It's a very flat, weird feeling part of the track. Now, it came through to turn two, though, but the 10 of De Benedetto just drove right on by me on the inside because of just how much this car is falling off. You can see me slipping and sliding, and we just started losing a bunch of track position. Kyle Busch, he would get up my inside with six laps to go as we went down into the corner, and now he is going to go through and take the second position away from myself as we are just struggling hard here at the end of stage two. Chase Elliott, Martin Truex Jr., they were up here in the mix. The McLaren of Eric Jones was kind of trying to get up here, and so was Cole Custer. Uh, so we go down into turn three now with five laps to go in stage two. Elliot, he's now going to go through and take over P3 as we came through out of turn four. I'm trying to fight back on the right-hand side, but I just had absolutely nothing at this point. So we came through out of turn two now in the 41 of Custer. He had gotten up my inside. He's having a great race now as he passes us for that fourth position. And then Martin Truex Jr. as well is going to be able to get to my inside as we came through out of turn two now on lap 23. And he even passes me, and I just had nothing for these guys here at the end of the stage so I knew immediately when we came to the pit lane we would have to make some adjustments uh, to hopefully get the car to be better on the long run as we came through to start the final lap now of stage two is go down into turn one Matt DiBenedetto trying to hold off Kyle Busch to get a playoff point DiBenedetto has got one win on the season currently back at Bristol earlier this season uh, two career wins as he won a race last season in the 21 car at the Coca-Cola 600 at Charlotte Motor Speedways we go down into turn three and four for the final time in stage two Kyle Busch doesn't quite have enough there for to Benedetto on the exit of turn four. So Matt to Benedetto wins stage two as we go from first all the way down to P6 in the final handful of laps of the second stage now as we cross the line. So definitely in need of some uh, crucial adjustments for that long run pace. Just too loose on the long run, guys. I, I just don't get it there. I mean, they just blew my doors off when we kind of got to, what, like six or seven laps to go. There you see the order on your screen. Uh, we have drivers like Anthony Alfredo, Chris Buescher up inside the top 10, and then uh, Chris, uh, Chase Briscoe, sorry, rounds out the top 10 now as we come into the pit lane to put the four tires on two, uh, two cans of fuel, and I decided to put the right side tire pressures down a bit, and then I also bumped up the wedge for just a little bit now as you would gain one spot on the pit lane, get ready to go green from P5 here to start the third and final stage. Matt DiBenedetto, Kyle Busch lead the way, Chase Elliott, Cole Custer, row number two, myself, Martin Truex Jr., row number three. 
three. And then behind us, we got Eric Jones and Anthony Alfredo in the McLaren. And then that front row motorsports car uh, that never qualifies on the front row. Now, as we go down through the center of turns one and out of turn two, the 41 is going to use that outside to his advantage there as I clear the 19 of Martin Truex Jr. We kind of settle in here for a moment in P5, but not a whole lot of laps here in the third and final stage. It's only uh, going to be 26 laps to go once we come through to cross the line here. Now, as De Benedetto is looking for that second win on the season now as we nearly got into that left rear of the 41 of Custer. Now, as we go down this front stretch, we know how much speed we got in this car on the short run, so I did not want to waste any time in passing these drivers like the 41, the 9, the 18, and then getting to the 10 of De Benedetto. So, we get on the attack right away here to that right-hand side of the 41 down this back straightaway is uh, Truex is side by side with Jones behind us. Now, as we go down into turns three, trying to complete this pass and move up now into the fourth position as the 10 of De Benedetto leads away still over Kyle Busch now as we exit turn four a little bit too tight they're feeling the effects of the adjustments that I had made on the pit lane now with 25 laps to go in this race two drivers out of this race and that is William Byron as well as Corey LaJoy in the 32 car now as we come through out of turns two finally uh, we get a decent run down the back stretch against the 41 of Cole Custer so we would clear him for the moment then we'll get to the outside of Chase Elliott now on lap 52 and it really started to feel like the car was coming in and I just really wanted to get through these guys as quickly as possible because I still was expecting the car to fall off on the long run. Uh, I was just hoping it would be a lot less severe than it was in stage two. So we would be able to get past the nine of Elliott. Lunge to the right-hand side now of the 18 of Kyle Busch into turns three, nearly clearing him there for a moment now. But we come through out of turns four. We were even with him and then sure enough, we would be able to just kind of continue on this outside lane and make it work now as we came through to the exit of turns four on lap 54 we will clear Kyle Busch down this front straightaway now just 21 laps to go putting the pressure on the back of the 10 of De Benedetto like I said wasting no time we get to the outside of him and try to take the lead right away now as we came through the center of one and two right on that right rear quarter panel of the 10 car trying to pinch him down but he was able to stay clear for a brief moment so Kyle Busch tries to look to my left hand side as we go down into turns three but we get back to that right hand side into the corner this time we might be able to get a good exit and sure enough we do get a lot better of a run here through the exit of turns four still side by side at his door now as we come through across the line De Benedetto appears to be fading a little bit now and this works perfectly into our opportunity or into our advantage now as we go down through the center of one and out of turns two and we are going to come through with a lot of momentum on the exit of the corner to clear the 10 of Matt De Benedetto and and now we have 20 laps to try and pull away. But the concern was that it took us quite a bit of time to work our way through the field. That the tires, I knew they were going to fall off. And I was a little bit concerned that we weren't going to be able to build up enough of a gap to where we could hold on. Uh, so we came through though a little bit later coming to lap 60, 16 laps to go. And we were close to a second ahead of the 10 of De Benedetto now. So I was just really hoping it was going to stay green. As you saw me go very deep into turns one right there. Now as it comes through out of turn two, getting a very good exit though at least. Uh, but like like I said, I was just really hoping that it was going to stay green here. So we came through to 13 laps to go. A few laps later on lap 63, we were about 7 to 8 tenths or so ahead of the 10 of De Benedetto. And I kind of stayed around there for a handful of laps. And that made me a little bit more comfortable that we were going to be able to hold on here. As long as I said, as long as it stays green, we should be okay now. As we came through to 10 laps to go. And it was still about 7 to 8 tenths between myself and second place of Matt De Benedetto here. As we came through the center of 1 and 2. But then the caution comes out with 10 laps to go. And now I realize that we are probably in a little bit of trouble now with the tires wearing. Now as you see the order, Kyle Larson having a rough day and so is our other teammate of Alex Bowman. So uh, Hendrick not having a great day for half of us and then the other half is doing very well with myself and Chase Elliott up here in the top three now as we're going to get ready to go green with less than 10 laps to go. We've led a lot of laps here today in New Hampshire, but I know it's going to be a very tough fight now considering the tire situation as a green flag is back out and we are underway coming through to start lap 69. Nice now as we go down towards turns one, clearing the 10 of DeBetadetto. He's going to try and get down in front of the nine of Elliott and sure enough, he does here as we come through the center of one and two. But Elliott actually gets his nose up the inside of DeBetadetto on the exit of turn two. Here's a go down this back straightaway. So Elliott moving through to try and take that second position. Here's a go down into turn three. They're still side by side behind us and preferably they would just continue battling side by side but unfortunately Elliot already clear for that second position and already to the back of me as we exit turns four as you can see the car is starting to get loose here with six laps to go so I realize we're in a little bit of trouble here as we go down into turn one Custer passes his teammate of De Benedetto moves into P3 Eric Jones in the McLaren in the mix as well now as Elliot looks up the inside of us as we exit turn two going down this bank straight away trying my best to hold on to this lead in a race that we've really dominated now as we go into turns three 
but then we came through a lap later on lap 71 Elliot back on the inside into turns one and two and he's actually going to make it look easy through the center of turns one and out of turn two he gets right up alongside us here as we go down the back straight away nearly uh, half a car length ahead here as we go down towards turn three Custer ready to pounce on the opportunity if anything happens this is the second time now myself and Elliot find ourselves in a battle for the win and last time of course he came out on top but we come through out of turns four the nine clears us for the lead now as we go down this run straight away with now just four laps to go now as we get to the back of him here as I try to get back to that right hand side of him through the center of one and two Eric Jones and the McLaren now up into P4 as we exit turn two he's trying to look to the inside of the 41 as I'm slipping and sliding I realize that it's pretty much over for us at this point we come through to two laps to go Elliot opening up a bit of a gap between himself and I as we lunge it down into turns one giving it everything that I've got anything that's left in the car now as we came through out of a turn two and we actually closed in a little bit on Chase Elliott now with a lap and a half to go. Custer now safe from Eric Jones, but now Custer's trying to put the pressure on me here as we get right to the back bumper of the nine. We actually give him a bump, but he is able to hang on to the cars. I'm slipping and sliding again on the exit of turns four. Chase Elliott leads the way to the final lap here in New Hampshire, about three to four car lengths or so between himself and I as we go down into turns one, sending it very deep once again into the corner, trying to close in to the back of the nine car. Now as we're very sideways, we overcorrect, we save it, but we hit the outside wall. The 41 goes by the 0-2 McLaren of Jones and the 18 of Kyle Busch are going to go by as well as we throw away any chance we had there as we go down into turns 3, Elliot Custer, P1, P2. I was so frustrated at this point now as I full send here on the exit of turn 4. We get sideways again and once again we overcorrect into the outside wall there as the car just had nothing left in it as Chase Elliott picks up the victory here in New Hampshire as we have a horrendous final lap now as we still manage to hang on to P7 there. As you saw out of turn 2, I just lost grip and overcorrected into the outside wall and the same thing happened in turn 4 but the turn 4 one uh, was more of frustration than it was just going for anything now uh, as I lost the car and just slammed the wall but a very frustrating to finish P7 after dominating pretty much the majority of the race so that was uh, very unfortunate now uh, but we still actually expand our points lead over Martin Truex Jr. so that was the one positive out of it as Chase Elliott picks up win number three on the season so he has really picked the pace up in that nine car or in that nine team lately here in the career mode and definitely are proving to be a championship threat once it comes to playoff time now as we just have four races left in the regular season in the cup series side of things as you, uh, as you saw the truck series grid there and now you see the Xfinity grid Hemrick currently the last car in the playoffs in the Xfinity series now as we come through to check out the Cup Series at playoff grid. Noah Gregson, three points below the cut line. Custer, 11. Bowman, 17 after a very rough day. Blaney, 21 below. Bubba Wallace, still about 44 below. He's been kind of in that same area for a while now as Larson and Briscoe both in uh, very interesting positions, even Cedric, it's going to be very close from, like I said, 14th all the way through, like, actually, like, 19th to 20th, so it's going to be interesting uh, to see how that goes here in the future. Now, as we go into Michigan in the next race, and I believe that will be our 100th Cup Series career start, if I'm not mistaken, I will double check uh, to make sure before we go into that episode. But overall, Chase Elliott with the victory, uh, it's good for HMS here today now as uh, I actually went through and checked his stats on the season currently. So Chase Elliott's stats are kind of interesting. He's got an average finish of 15.4, nine top tens over 20 races. And then I looked at myself, we've actually led 194 laps, uh, but with an average finish of 8.5. And then we got uh, 12 top five, 16 top tens, and of course, four wins. But before we end this episode, I just want to say a quick thank you to the Going Racing members on the channel. MJ, Aiden, uh, James Jackson, Dylan, Joseph9001, RJ, Timothy, Bubba Jr., Illinois Diecast, NASCAR on Docs, Devin Roth, Eric Schwedge, as well as Matthias Hansen. You guys help out a lot, as I always say, and I really appreciate it. And I just want to say thank you to everybody for watching this episode, taking the time out of the day to choose to watch one of my videos. It does mean a lot. And I will see you guys in the next one at Michigan, where we will have just four races left in the regular season. Have a great day, everybody.